Welcome to Addicted to Busy, the podcast specifically for overachieving property managers who are dying for a little more work-life balance in their lives. Each week, we dismantle all the BS that holds us back. You'll learn how to nix those tricky self-sabotaging habits so that you have the time, energy, and motivation to create what you really want in life. If you're looking to shift from overcommitted to overjoyed, this is the podcast for you. Let's do this. Now, your host, Anna Havelyana. Hello, and welcome back to Addicted to Busy. It has been a minute. I don't have a huge following, but I do know that there are a few of you who listen in regularly, and so I wanted to share a life update and also share what I've been working on. I've returned back to property management full time. So it's been harder to craft out the time to do a weekly podcast. When I started the podcast, I wasn't working a corporate job. So I had time and space to create episodes each and every week. Plus, I was doing much more public speaking. And so those two tasks went hand in hand. And I love working on my podcast. It's fun. It forces me to dive back into some of the books that I've read and to also try and explain and create my own concepts. I had the opportunity to work on podcasts and coaching and public speaking because I had a husband who could support both of us financially. While we lived together, we lived well below our means and we didn't spend extravagantly so we could live on one income. But since then, my husband and I have decided that we should part ways. Now, had you asked me just a year ago what it would feel like to go through the divorce process, I would have assumed that it would be emotional, messy, and shameful. And while that's definitely true, it was also very healing, calming, and to some degree empowering. I will always be thankful to my husband because he gave me the space to try and his support led me to make this podcast, which I love dearly. Without him, none of this would have been possible. Now, I'd hoped that I could become a speaker and a coach and replace my income, but that didn't happen. So when my husband and I split, I needed to seek out employment again. And it was a tough decision that came at kind of a tricky time within my business. In September, the month that we split, I had secured speaking engagements in Portland, Knoxville, Richmond, Minneapolis, and Atlanta. And so it truly felt that my business was on its way to take off and like the message that I wanted to share was starting to take hold. People were responding to the podcast and sharing it with people. But I was not 100% confident that I could support myself on a fluctuating income. So as hard as it was, and I have cried many tears over this, I decided that the best course of action was to return to a full-time job. Those of you who know me know that I am very type A. So the thought of not having a consistent paycheck while living on my own, that probably wouldn't have been the best decision for me. Now, this is also why it's very important to network and, if possible, get involved or volunteer within industry organizations. I was so thankful that when it came to a difficult life decision, that I could rely on my professional network to have my back. My years of volunteering, my time at industry events, and getting to know others in the industry truly provided me with a soft place to land. So now I'm in this spot where I have to figure out how to spend the 168 hours that I get every week between a full-time job and what is now a side hustle. Now, I've worked out a couple of iterations in my head as to what Addicted to Busy is going to look like in the future. And some of those decisions rely on the needs of my current property and my team. So posting a weekly podcast isn't realistic, but I love doing it. So I've decided that I'm going to drop my perfectionistic thinking about how often I should post and only fit it in when it works within my schedule. I am slowly learning to love public speaking, but traveling every other week isn't really feasible either. So I'm focusing on places where I can speak virtually. One thing that I do know is that while public speaking terrifies me, 
It also somewhat feels like a calling. I have to send out a huge, huge thank you to Erica in Portland with Multifamily Northwest who gave me my first speaking engagement. And then Pamela with NARPM who truly helped spread my message. Without them, I don't think that I ever would have had the courage to speak at these conferences. Whenever I finish a speech, even though I'm nervous, I end up feeling very, very fulfilled. I liken this to how I feel about running a race. Anytime I trade for a race, I get three fourths of the way through training and I hate every second of it and I want to quit. And then the second that I cross the finish line, I'm already thinking about the next race. Same thing for public speaking. I get nervous doing it, but I feel really good about what I'm putting together. And it feels like I'm doing work that matters. I want to help managers make sure that they are taking great care of their health and spending quality time with the people and the passions that they love. Amongst this transition, I've also maybe considered going back to school so that I can learn more about health and habit change. But the problem is, is that I have absolutely no clue what I would major in. What I'd love to focus on is helping others become more efficient within the office so that they have more time outside of work. Like literally, I would love to be a consultant who observes various office settings and tries to uncover inefficiencies. So if anyone knows what line of work this is, please shoot me an email because I need to know. As you can see, I am in a bit of a transition, but one thing that I know is that I want to help people, which means I need to learn how to communicate better. So that's why I've decided to focus this year on becoming a better public speaker. I started this year by taking an improv comedy class, and it was horrifying and gratifying all at once. I actually have a podcast recorded about this. I may or may not post it after this episode. Uh, time will tell. But when I decided that I needed to work on my public speaking skills, I what I wanted more than anything was to gain more confidence in giving off-the-cuff responses and engaging more with the audience. Right now, I'm still very tied to my script because I want to make sure that I quote unquote, get it right. I wanted to gain more confidence in being able to give off the cuff responses and engaging with the audience. And while I'm not quite sure if I succeeded in that goal or not, what I do know is that the improv class was one of the more challenging tasks that I'd put myself up to. And also I had a ton of fun doing it. From time to time, I would surprise myself with the random lines that would fall out of my mouth without thinking. On the flip side, there were plenty of things that I said that I wish I would have thought twice about before opening my mouth. More than once, I could feel my face just burning in embarrassment as my attempts to chime in might have fallen flat. And every once in a while, I would throw out a line that was kind of unexpectedly received with laughter. This class really challenged my intellect. It definitely pushed me out of my comfort zone and it kept me on my toes. So I'm glad I did it. And I'm also very glad that it's over. Now that that class is over, I'm working with a coach to improve my public speaking skills. I'm learning about how to practice my delivery, how to use my voice and how to create clear points that people can easily understand. In the future, I would like to potentially take a graphic design class so that I can learn how to communicate effectively through the visuals on my slides as well, right? So I'm doing all of this with the intent of becoming a better public speaker for my business, but also because I know that these skills are going to pay off for me within my career as a whole. So as you're listening, I encourage you to invest in your own skills in some ways. Do it in ways that feel fun. Find the edges of your skill sets and learn how to push them. Keep in mind, investing in your skills doesn't always have to pertain to career skills. You've heard me talk in other episodes about learning how to salsa dance. Now, does salsa dancing have absolutely anything to do with property management? No, not at all. But because it requires me to use both my brain and body, it does give me a 100% complete reprieve from my day. When I'm in class, I literally cannot think about my residence or my property 
because the act of learning requires my full brain power. And giving my brain a break from property management is exactly what allows me to return to work the next morning, feeling ready and alive to do it all over again. I think back to when I was working 24-7 and not making time for my hobbies or my health, my brain rarely got a break from thinking about ledgers, CapEx projects, or occupancy. Having something new to learn helps me prevent burnout. As I share this with all of you, the point that I'm trying to make is that I'm doing my best to take my own advice. And the advice that I'm focusing on right now is prioritizing sleep and health and nixing my tendencies to become a perfectionist. The old version of me would have definitely continued on posting a full podcast episode every single week, even if that meant not sleeping or making time to feed myself well. The old version of me would likely seek out a property that was challenging and required a lot of work. The old version of me would probably get down on herself if she didn't make it to dance class every single week. The old version of me would get involved in far too many organizations and volunteer far too much of her non-existent free time. So as it pertains to what I've been up to, I am shifting, I'm changing, I'm readjusting. And to be completely honest with you, I am fighting the urge at every corner to fall back into patterns that weren't serving me. In the past, if I was faced with a challenge that I didn't ask for, you would likely find me overeating, over drinking, and definitely overworking. I would do a lot of things instead of taking time to sit back, process, and move through the difficult emotions of change. This life change for me has been the perfect opportunity to put my skills to the test. It's the perfect chance to prove that the things that I share on this podcast and in my course are concepts that I also follow. And I can be humble enough to say that following these ideas isn't easy. I'm constantly battling my inner dialogue that tells me that busyness and overdoing it are the answer. That I have to remember that the way that I choose to spend my time is a reflection of what my values are. Yes, I value hard work, but I also value my health. So I have to set limits with work so that I can make time for cooking, good meals, moving my body, and getting rest. One of the exercises that I do with my clients is having them create their set of non-negotiables, okay? Managers who prioritize their self-care are going to be far more efficient than managers who don't. When you are well-rested, mentally sharp, and emotionally balanced, it's going to be a lot easier to do your best work. Okay, so we do this by choosing specific values to focus on, and then we choose three to five specific actions to take every single day. All right, now, there are a few parameters that we want to put around a non-negotiable. First of all, your non-negotiable should be attainable even on the days when a building is quite literally on fire. All right, so for me, I have a non-negotiable that I will exercise every single day. But for me, a 10-minute walk around the block counts as exercise. Your non-negotiable needs to be so easy that you cannot fail. Next, you do not need more than five, and I'd I'd even argue more than three. You do not need more than five non-negotiables. Again, this needs to be so easy that you cannot fail. At the time of this current recording, My non-negotiables are movement every day, journal or meditate every day, and then logging my food and doing a self-check-in before I go to bed, right? These are all things, all of which can be done in five minutes or less. Finally, when choosing a non-negotiable, non-negotiables are exclusively for you. What I mean to say by that is we're choosing to do these for our benefit and not because we're trying to change someone's opinion of us. Now, the good news is that if you choose non-negotiables that are in alignment with your values and your goals, they will inevitably benefit those around you as well. Okay, remember, managers who take care of themselves are more effective than the ones who don't. We live in a world where we're all inundated with responsibilities, 
obligations and plenty of expectations to maintain. So it can be easy to forget that small little actions over time, if you do them consistently, those will add up to something great. The other piece of advice that I'm following, but also gritting my teeth while doing so, is acknowledging that you can do anything, but you can't do everything. Like I mentioned earlier, my past self would have pushed to get the biggest property with the biggest salary, but the me of today knows that if I did that right now, that I'd likely have to lay down my business altogether, which I'm just not willing to do. I can do anything, but I sure as hell can't do everything, which means I have to readjust my goals to make them more attainable. I see this happen all the time, especially with our managers who are highly competitive. Oftentimes, people will set the biggest goals because they feel like they have to go big or go home. But what happens is that then they tend to crash and burn. You might get into boom and bust cycles. Now, if you find yourself here or if this resonates with you, it's fine to want to push your limits, but it's also important to remember that there's a season for pushing and then there's going to be a season for recalibrating. If you're a listener of this podcast, chances are that you might be like me and that you like to set big goals. I have a lot of goals. I have goals for my career. I have goals to PR my marathon time, to try a triathlon. Um, If I can, I want to travel internationally every year. I want to get on the Board of Regents at my alma mater. I want to learn how to speak Spanish. I would love to be invited to speak at the NAA Apartmentalized Conference or speak at the IREM Global Summit. I want to learn to dance. I want to finally learn how to roast a whole chicken. But I can't do it all at once. So I have to plan strategically. As I've made my plan for this year... I've had to lay a few things down, one of them being the weekly podcast and the other being long distance running. And I hate it. (laughs) I miss both of these things dearly. I am working hard to deprogram all of the years of conditioning that tell me that I should always be better and doing more than I was yesterday. Yes, I want to be doing all of the things all of the time. But I've hit burnout enough times to know that that is not possible. So all of this is to tell you that I truly want to give you something every week to listen to and talk about. But right now, I just can't. I do promise I'll be back. It'll just be a surprise on when and how that happens. In the meantime, if you have any feedback on the podcast, reach out to me. You can find me on Instagram at Addicted to Busy. Also, if you need a speaker for your manager's meeting, email me at hello at anahavliana.com. I have been hard at work practicing my public speaking skills, and I would love to come work with you and your team. All right, everyone. Until next time, whenever that may be, I love you. Keep going. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of Addicted to Busy. If you're enjoying the show, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. This helps others find the show, and we greatly appreciate it. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next episode.